uh, in this video, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, answering Black Marxism affirmatives on the water resolution. As you know, as we get closer to ending off this series that's been Black Marxism and water, this is kind of like the last step that we do in all of the series. And so I'm really excited to talk about it, and so hopefully so are you. I think that there are a lot of really interesting angles that Black Marxism will have when it comes to the water resolution. So I think that being able to really understand what your priorities should be against these affirmatives and what you should be doing to debate them is extremely important for you to just have well-rounded strategy throughout the re the year and i think that if you're going to like those first couple tournaments of the year or the last couple tournaments of the year where you're really trying to be predictive of the types of angles that teams might break out that you are not really thinking about black marxism is definitely one of those places especially for critical teams on the affirmative and so i think that being uh, ready for that and being able to debate it uh, heads on can be a really really good strategy because i definitely think it's one that can work against a variety a, a, a wide range of audience and strategies and so having a really specific strategy that really uh, tries to answer the nuance of the argument is overall just like extremely extremely helpful and I think just important as a whole I think that when you're really trying to answer these types of affirmatives and um, make sense of them. A lot of it is really having some of the background information that I did in the intro to Black Marxism and Water video and in the last couple of videos that I did just talking about Black Marxism and Water as a whole on the affirmative. And so getting those last couple of videos in terms of like what I'm thinking about when I say Black Marxism and what that really means when we're talking about racial capitalism and relationship to water, I think it's really, really important to have a grasp on the stuff that I'll kind of be talking about here. To kind of start off, I think that some of the priorities that you should kind of have when you're answering these affirmatives, I think typically is really about the question of how can you uh, really forward or center like the difference that they want to draw between the way in which they're thinking about like capitalism and its racializing features and its ability to relate to the question of like whether or not we can, can or can't do politics it seems like a lot of times when these arguments are being read they're using the argument or the kind of like idea that is used is that dispossession that is done like racial dispossession that is done ultimately like casts out the ability to access or do politics in a way that doesn't basically function to continue that dispossession because it is what kickstarts capitalism. And I think that really defeating and trying to find a way to get at that thesis either by trying to make arguments that are based in basically disproving um, the way in which dispossess dispossessors relationship to capitalism as it relates to like the status quo and how it develops historically, or by trying to win that the way in which the affirmative is thinking about the role that politics plays in relationship to capitalism is false, I think are the best two places to really contest this type of argument. And so I think early on, you really want to figure out ways that you can contest that kind of like thesis explanation of capitalism capitalism in its relationship to politics, because I think that regardless of what route that you take, even if you aren't necessarily another team that's going to be saying reform good or whatever, I think that it's really good to have a grasp on why they don't kind of control the root of like how politics is kind of like motivated and function, because otherwise I think it can be really hard for you to weigh whatever impact that you want to weigh. And so I think having some type of indict of how that um, kind of like comes over time and how it um, develops over time is just extremely important as a whole. I think that when you go on from there, you really need to answer the question of how you really want to deal with the role of debate and the way that it plays into the impact calculus that you know that they want to forward. I think that every time you see a Black Marxism app, you should not be scared of the way in which they can kind of pivot into like these larger impacts that I think could definitely do a lot of harm to the way in which the uh, uh, negative really wants to get comfortable or weight impacts against it. And so I think that you need to be able to answer questions about climate and the role that uh, capitalism plays towards it, even if the answer to that just needs to be that debate can't resolve that question and that debaters shouldn't be responsible for being able to uh, absolve or resolve that question. And I think that doing so can definitely allow you to end up in a bunch of positions that are a lot more comfortable than just kind of like letting it sit and this kind of like big ideas kind of fester throughout the debate for them to pivot to closer to the end. I think that when you're generally just trying to figure out what type of case arguments that you should be making, I really think that getting at the question of how you want to deal with the impact comparison and how you want to deal with relationship to the methodology really comes first. I think that making a lot of like analytical intuitive arguments about why the uh, method can't resolve the totality of the impact or why it doesn't make a significant enough step or uh, fast enough in order to ultimately destroy things like capitalism or the current relationship that we have to the climate, at least to just check in order to like get the affirmative kind of bounded to a more strict set of solvency guidelines that make it harder for them to really weigh their uh, arguments uh, across different flows. And I think after that, it's really just a question of being able to win that the ways in which the um, Critic uh, the way in which the uh, the AF is kind of like thinking of its relationship to how we respond to like the level of like politics as a whole is incorrect either a because of its investment into a kind of like new institutionality that is meant to kind of like replace governmentality but doesn't actually change the role that it serves and the way that it kind of produces violence because of its relationship to sovereign sovereignty or winning that like sovereignty and politics are an inevitable part of how we're able to manage things like waters and various other types of resources at large scales 
and that the kind of like infrastructure that we have to do so now in the status quo is a useful tool in order to be able to resolve the emerging crises that happen in those places. And I think that just deciding your direction on a lot of these case arguments can be really helpful for you to have really sound ground to contest the affirmative alpha for whatever type of argument you want to read. Then I think when you're kind of transitioning this onto a question of how you read like framework and T arguments against these types of affirmatives, I think the first thing that you really want to decide is this question of what is the role of debate. I think a lot of black Marxism teams, like I said in the last couple of videos, have really good warrants and arguments about how debate can be used as a politically planned space and why the kind of radical vision of what debate could be as a planning space could definitely be one that I think wins a lot of judges over just based off of the many examples that they can have of how that kind of like dialogue and various forms of like interaction and kind of like push and pull of various types of revolutionary dialogue kind of create different types of action. And I think in that world, you need to come up with a really strong argument about why the kind of procedural nature of debate, because of the way in which the resolution is positioned and the way in which speech times work, that those kind of procedural kind of values are necessary to be kept at some level in order for there to be a production of a different type of usage of politics or debate, or for there to be dialogue about what that proper usage uh, should look like and be. And then I think it's really just a question of how do you kind of hardline win that the specific kind of like lowering of mechanisms down to the question of like the United States federal government and the kind of like allowing of things like the instance of the affirmative existence on the negative as a much better way to maybe orient the debate than the idea that we can kind of like open up basically endless uh, interpretations or endless um, kind of access to these kind of like third party mechanisms that aren't really set. And I think that in that context, you at least have a lot of arguments about like the slippery slope that teams will use to like how they kind of get into questions of like fiat and use similar tools of fiat without actually using the United States federal government, which I think definitely can take up a really interesting set of procedural questions that I think should kind of guide how you're wanting to give the rest of the debate. Because I think that there are a lot of really interesting linkages that you can pull between how those types of, if they're right about like the revolutionary potential of debate, how the rule that you're kind of using to instill debate get us closer to the question of the affirmative than the affirmative's kind of like refusal to partake in like the resolution normatively. And I think that being able to like make those claims and substitute them with examples, topical versions of the AF and really good arguments for switch side can really booster like the arguments that you want to make procedurally about the value of things like fairness and make them allow harder for the other team to overcome in terms of their ability to win those things as like delinked from the ability of the affirmative to be uh, successful or helpful or efficient. And so hopefully that can kind of guide some ideas that you'll be using in order to get into the final video that I'll be doing on black, black Marxism and water that will be coming soon. Thanks for tuning in.